Hello handsome, my name is Alice. My sexy voice will guide you throughout the entire video. Please make sure you have prepared some lotion and tissue ready. In this video, I will give you 10 useful tips that you can use to survive this shitty P2W game. The information were collected from others who have played the Korean version before, but have absolutely no clue of what they're doing. Tips number 1, repeating the boring main quest you can repeat the main quests that you have finished, to get the achievement reward and grind new characters. Tap the quest menu here, and you will see the acts and chapters of the main story. You can change the difficulty level, and repeat the selected quests. Quest repeat is also useful to farm rubies. Tap the main menu, then go to mission. You will see the lists of available achievement that you can do. Each tier will give lot of ruby stones as reward. Most of these quests are about winning without any dead heroes. The more the stars mean the faster you can level up the reward tier. You can also grind new character as the hero gain experience throughout the quest, but don't put too much hope on the loot, mostly are simply trash. If you have been a good boy and registered your account in the game official website, and answer at least 10 questions in the quiz event, congratulations, you are eligible for tons of fancy rewards. But if you didn't pre-register before, go sit in the corner and cry. To claim your rewards, simply go to settings and you will see your game ID number. Copy that number. Done? Good. Open your browser and go the 7 Nights 2 official website, the link is in description below. Log in with your account, and check my account menu. You will see 3 different coupon codes, copy the first one. Then tap go now, enter your game ID number in the first box, then enter the first coupon number. Voila! Reward will be sent to your in-game mailbox. Repeat the same steps to other two coupons. It takes a few minutes for the reward mail to reach your inbox. Just be patient. And for the free coupon code, go to settings, select coupon menu, then choose the second option. Enter the following code 1110SEVENKNIGHTS2 all caps lock. Reward will be automatically sent to your inbox. You're welcome. Tips number 3. Equipping your heroes. Fully salvage these white class useless equipment to gain upgrade stones. Once you collect many white upgrade stones, go to craft menu, then create green upgrade stones. You can use those stones to enchant your green gears and level it up. The maximum level for green gears is 10. Next, if you have two similar type of gear, you can combine them by transcending the gear and get higher power. So gather those green and blue gears, and combine the same types. Maximum level for transcending gear is 5. Each gear has its own specific buff. Look carefully on the tiny icon at the corner of the gear picture. Equipping the same gear type will activate a special buff. You need to assign the gear types according to your hero class. Equipping 5 parts will get you maximum buff, or you can also combine 2 different buffs by equipping 2 sets of different gear types. Tips number 4, level up your heroes. This game is very grindy, and when having lots of heroes in your lineup, it's a very challenging task to level them up. Most effective way is of course by finishing main quests. Other alternative is from field of exploration. You can buy the map at the shop or get it from daily reward. Too bad, these map are very limited, unless you are willing to spend more money on map packs. Next is Experience Dungeon, this dungeon is only available once per day. You will get EXP bottles from here. You can also buy EXP bottle at Guild Shop, but the best EXP bottle is from the Topaz Shop. 
these huge EXP bottle can level up a character from level 1, to level 27 instantly. You can get Topaz from leveling up your rank in PvP Arena. Tips number 5. Getting the extra buffs. There are a lot of different buffs in the game that can boost your team performance. First one is Guild Buff. By joining a guild, you can get guild coins that can be used to buy three kinds of different buffs at the shop. Please visit us. These buffs are active for 24 hours, so you need to renew them every day. Second buff is from the pet. Tap set team menu, and be sure to assign a pet in your team. This little sucker can give lots of useful buffs. You can also borrow your friend's pet. Tap this icon to open the friend's pet list. Then choose the one with buff you think will be useful. This is why you need to be friend with strong whales. Sadly, borrowing pet can only be done on a single chapter and is limited to 5 times a day. Third buff is formation buff. By selecting certain formation, you can get buff according to its purpose. These formation can be leveled up by using books. You can collect these books from the daily dungeons. And you can also craft new books by converting them into different types. Just convert one of the book to universal type, then convert the universal one to the type that you need. Fourth buff is from Gears. As I mentioned earlier about how to equipping your heroes properly, assigning the correct gear type according to hero class can boost your team power. Fifth buff is from Tank and Support Heroes. Check the hero passive skills, I recommend to choose the one with passive skills that can affect the entire team members. Example, Valda have passive skill that can give shield to all team members, so always make sure to have hero with this kind of passive skill. Tips number 6, Transcending Heroes. When you summon heroes, and you get heroes that you already have, it will be converted into hero solstons. Go to Fuse menu, and combine the solstons that you don't need. By random chances, you might get a higher grade solstons that can be used to transcend your hero. I personally will combine all white and green grades, to get at least blue stones. So I can transcend my blue class heroes and increase their maximum level capacity. Max level is 30, and by transcending the hero, you can increase the caps even more. Tips number 7, Mastery You can level up your account by finishing main quests, and you can unlock new mastery level according to your account level. First thing you need to unlock is earring. Once you unlock it, you can equip earrings on your heroes and increase their power. As your account gain more level, you can continue on with other mastery such as necklace and ring. Tips number 8, Manual Battle. Till at first I thought this game is just another boring autoplay. But once you reach high difficulty level, fighting strong boss cannot be done in auto mode. You need to control your team manually. My favorite strategy is by controlling the support class because the healer are very squishy and must be kept alive. So I will manually control the healer, and at certain time, I will use gather button to withdraw all team members into safety when the boss is about to launch ultimate attack. With the correct combination of heroes, buff, passive skill, and formation, you can win against strong boss, with a very small team power far below the recommended level. You just gotta manually control the team correctly. Tips number 9, rank up your team in PvP mode. You can get tons of rubies and topaz by reaching higher rank in PvP mode. The best I can do so far is diamond rank, but it's now very hard to gain victory because diamond rank is filled with whales or those lucky bastard who manage to get legendary heroes in the summon gacha. I don't have any legendary heroes, but reaching diamond rank with only blue class heroes is relatively easy. You only need the right hero type and the right formation. And this leaves us to last tips. Tips number 10, healers are for pussies. 
Healer or support class are very squishy and easy to kill. Sometimes they can be a burden to your team, instead of helping. When entering PvP battle, the healers will stand at the back, but sometimes they get drawn into the middle of the chaos and get raped. To make things worse, opponent who have DPS class in their team can automatically aim at support class. Like Shane for example, she will jump to the back of your formation and aim at your healer. Unless you are one of those lucky players who can get legendary support heroes, such as Karen. But of course, this will change once you have Karen from the 7th day login reward. This hero is a very strong healer, and she can revive dead team members. What an annoying bitch. Then looking at this situation, sometimes it's best to build a team without healer for PvP. I build a team consisting of one tank, one universal, and two DPS. As the battle starts, the DPS heroes will jump and ambush the opponent's healer from the back. Easy win. But unfortunately, this strategy won't work if you're fighting a whale team full of legendaries, especially if they have Spike. God. I fucking hate Spike. Okay folks, that is all 10 tips we have for now. Stay tuned for more upcoming tips. And if you also have other tips and strategies, I hope you don't mind to share it with others in comment section below. Thanks all for watching and see you in the next video.